Welcome to Kingdom Builders. This is episode number eight. So glad you guys decided to join in for another episode. Uh, if you will, leave us a comment. Let us know what, what you're thinking. Uh, join in on the conversation. Give us a like. Um, share it to, to your friends, your family, your neighbors, um, whoever that you think may um, and enjoy this conversation. And, and, and while we wait for that, uh, today's topic uh, with, with the, the holiday season uh, in, in full swing now, it's really easy to get caught up in just the hustle and bustle of it, uh, kind of start to focus in on, on ourselves and uh, really kind of lose all of, uh, all side of what's really important. And uh, so tonight we want to talk to you guys about how it is that we earn or receive heavenly rewards. How, how do we strive to, to receive heavenly rewards? Uh, Brother Grant, what do you, what do you think when it, whenever I say strive to earn heavenly rewards? What, what comes to mind? Well, ultimately, the crowns will be casting at Jesus' feet. Right. And which comes through faithfulness. Okay. So a lot of people will take that statement, <clears throat> and I want to be very clear on it. We're not talking about salvation. Uh, right, salvation cannot be earned. It, it is, right. is uh, by, by faith through grace, or by grace through faith only. Um, but but the, the rewards that we're talking about, as Brother Greg mentioned, it's those that once we uh, it, uh, appear face to face with Christ, and and we're sitting in front of that that bema seat judgment, that, that our works will be tried, and then rewards will be given to us. Um, so, so Brother Grant, you said to to be faithful is how we get it. And, and I've got another scripture here to, to contribute to that. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, uh, Paul wrote, and he says, But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Right? So we know that we can't even fathom the rewards that right. will be available to us once we get there. But the only way to receive any sort of reward, he says, is to love him. And, uh, you know, that, that sounds kind of generic. You know, how, how do you receive rewards is, is to love the Lord. But that, that's one of the greatest commandments, to, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength, um, and, and your neighbor as yourself. Um, yeah. our, our, our first re- requirement um, as, as Christians is to truly love the Lord with, with all you got. Right. Exactly right. Uh, based on what you just said there, if you go to Genesis 15, chapter 15, you talk about you talk about things that uh, earn your rewards. Now, I want you to listen to what Abraham did here. Abraham, his name's Abram right here, and he turned down all the rewards from the king of Sodom. Mm-hmm. Okay? He did not say, give them to my, give them to my, uh, people, I do not want your stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. After he did these things, listen. What, listen. What God tells him. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, "Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and an exceeding great reward." Because of his faithfulness, right, to God, to stay His and not to taint Himself, not to compromise Himself with the the, the gifts of Sodom. God rewarded him with himself. Right. And that's that's an amazing reward yeah, in absolutely. that aspect too. I mean, come on, man. God says, I am your reward. And I'm your shield and buckler, Abram. Man. And yeah, that's <laughs> I, I, in and of itself, I mean, I, for, for, you know, so many people talk about you know the, the streets of gold and and, 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 the, and the walls of jasper, the gates of pearl, you know, and, and, and all those are great. You know, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But if if that's why we're going to heaven, then uh, we, we need to check ourselves because I'm not so sure that, that we're going to get there. Our, 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 our main focus ought to be that reward of being in the presence of the Creator, exactly. uh, of, of our Savior who, who graciously died for us. Um, I mean, that is the ultimate reward. Oh, yeah. And that, 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 that's one of my favorite verses. I mean, it just makes you shake and, and quit. You get, you get chill bumps on you when you read this thing. Just read, this, read that part to yourself when you're studying. Man, it just just <laughs> for him for for the Lord of all things created all things to, to offer himself as your reward. Mm-hmm. What else would you want? Right. You know, and, and what I mean when you go to heaven, 
I know we we talk about the crowns uh, uh, to uh, give to us to, to throw at Jesus' feet and stuff, but the ultimate reward is to see yeah. the nail scarred hands. You know. Yeah. I know. I know people are going to say, "Well, you shouldn't say that," or or going to quibble or quibble over uh, that part about throwing the throwing the, throwing the crown. But how many times have you said? Amongst yourself and praying, and maybe even a tearful prayer, just want to see him. Yeah, you know, just, just to be in his presence. I yeah, don't know, is, is something that's. I don't it, know. it ought to be designed. I, I, I can't, I can't explain people. it. Right. Yeah. You, know? you got something? Well, you're itching. To know yeah. You. Johnny mentioned, you know, Abram didn't accept the gifts from the the king of Sod- you, Sodom. Sodom. And no doubt, you know, everyone was like, man, that's probably worth a lot. I could get a lot out of that. But, you know, he wasn't trying to please himself. Exactly. He was trying to please God. And here's a, an account of the exact opposite of it. And it's, it's the account of the rich man in, in Luke 12, 16. Uh, it's completely the opposite because this man was all about I. He he wasn't worried about God. And just listen to this. And he spake a parable, and this is Jesus speaking, but he says, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall, thy soul shall be required of thee. Then those shall those things be which thou hast provided so is he that layeth, layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Yeah. You know, it's so easy um, to try to get in a hurry and, and, and to gather up that stuff. You know, uh, in, in second or first Corinthians, that verse I read there uh, a moment ago, he was quoting out of Isaiah 64 and uh, it's worded just slightly different, but it says um, in verse four, for since the beginning of the world, Men have not heard nor perceived by ear, neither had the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he had prepared for him that waiteth for him. You know, I, I know this is a struggle in myself. I get impatient. You know, I, I, I want what I want and I want it now. You know, and, and just, just like that um, farmer, uh, he, he's going to gather it all up by himself. By himself. He's going to build up his barn and he's going to get everything now rather than sitting back in faithfulness yeah. and waiting for the Lord to provide in his time. You know, I, I think that's uh, a key factor too in, in being glorifying to God is having that faithfulness to know, you know what, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I don't know how I'm going to deal with it, but first I'm going to seek your will for it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to wait for you, but before I make a move, you know, brother, Grant, I heard you praying just the other day, you know, praying for the next step in your career. Um, you know, having that desire to, I'm not going to jump into anything. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to wait for God's guidance and just really put our faith into action. It's more than just a word, but it's a willingness to sit back and say, God, I'm, I'm going to wait on you. Um, I think that's, that's, uh, that's a, a very uh, it, good way to, to, to store up those treasures in heaven is to really exhibit our faithfulness. Yes, and it's, it's, it's also an act of faith too. We, we wait on the Lord to move. And and show you uh, the things that you're all talking about. You know, like the how to store your rewards, and that's what we talk about. Lay not up. Uh, lay, Matthew six says, "Lay not uh, not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. But lay up uh, for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where the thieves not break." nor still for where your treasure is, there is your heart. You talk about the farmer. His treasure was was what is what was his profit gonna be from that or what he was gathering in. 
And that is materialism, materialistic things. And God says, you can't rely on this. Right. I mean, when we die, there is nothing we're going to take with us. Right. Nothing at all. Uh, and and even in this uh, in this culture, there's nothing we're going to be able to store either. So what I'm saying is, yeah, you ain't going to be able to do anything on, on this side, but you lay up those things where your heart is, and our heart is with Jesus Christ. So you lay those treasures up with Him. That's that's how we gain those crowns. Uh, we we work for Him. Now we're not saved by those works at all, and we're not we're not trying to. To, to make ourselves uh, you know, elevated in any stature or position, but we're just working for him mm -hmm. and growing in that aspect and growing treasures up for him. Right. Now, I think a lot of people get, you know, when Christians say, I don't, I don't, maybe you talked about this uh, earlier, uh, I'm going to go to church and do this. <laughs> you going to go to church again? Yeah. Now, I mean, how many times have you heard that? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go to church again. And that's the least we can do. Right. Just go to church. And that, and that in itself is stored up treasures up in heaven, Graham. But there's more that we can do, and we don't boast about those things we do. I mean, how do we, we put together our Christmas gifts, right? Do we boast about that? No. No. We just do it. We do the things that God has called us to do because. We love him, not to boast about it. If you boast about it, you lose. I think you lose those treasures. Oh yeah, I mean, they're, no, they're it, no longer for him. Yeah, we've got our glory right there by by man. And uh, you know, John, we were talking about this the other day over lunch. Um, what, what's the Christian to do in this culture where you know, there, there's so much pressure on us to um, kind of cave on on, on, on on hard topics to to, to back off and. Uh, just to allow people to, to live in sin and, and do that sort of thing. And, and I think this is another way in which we can bring God glory and uh, store up treasures in heaven is to endure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it says in James chapter one, verse 12, <laughs> That's okay. I got it first. Huh? <laughs> James chapter one, uh, verse 12 says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation for when he is tied for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So once again, we see that, that it's, it's for those who love him, but it's also for those that are willing to endure the temptations, right? It's so easy to get fired up when people press us and, and that we want to take, a, <clears throat> take it in our own hands and, and, and defend the faith with, with, a, with a great vigor and, and, and a great vengeance. Right. But, you know, we know that vengeance is the Lord. So we're, 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 we're to, to be loving, we're, we're to be kinding, um, kind and to, 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 to bring forth the gospel, absolutely. But it's not our job to convince people. You know, no. It's not our job to, 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 to win these battles. You know, that, that, that's for the Lord. Um, so when it, these temptations come, whatever they may be, to, to just endure them and, and, and wait for the Lord, realizing that he tells us he's, he's, he's given us an escape. You know, that, that there's not a temptation out there that, that he hasn't provided a way at, uh, through it. Um, and so we've just got to be willing to endure it. Um, so many times the, the Christian gets tired, they, they get frustrated, right. and yeah, you're right. we, we rely on ourselves. And uh, I, even though we may do the right thing, um, we're, we're doing it for the wrong reason, and uh, <laughs> that crown's going to be burned up or we standing in ashes. Yeah, we, we, we do get frustrated, though. I do. I, I can't speak for you, but I absolutely uh, do. You know me. <laughs> uh, I do think I do think this, so this is different from what, what people think. But I, I do think that, uh, that the men of God and then in church, the church is supposed to stand against evil. I, mm -hmm. I do believe that we're supposed to do that. And I'm not, again, we're not talking about, we're not taking swords or, right. you, know, you know, we're just taking the word of God. And we're, and we're not for ourselves, no, we're but, to stand firm, absolutely. Right. But not for ourselves, but to but to see the word of God elevated in, in this culture. Mm -hmm. I do I do believe that. And yes, that does get frustrating sometimes. Because I think you we involve ourselves too much into into the altercation that can happen. Mm -hmm. And there's where we fall. Yeah. Uh but uh and that's not my treasure of Christ. I, I've been thinking about this a lot. 
<laughs> <laughs> and that's not laying like up treasures at all, or or working for Christ. You're you're more worried about yourself than than you are about getting His word to these people that are lost. And there's plenty of these people that are lost mm -hmm. that need the word of God in this culture. It takes a lot of prayer. It does. It takes it a lot of prayer, so. and a lot of uh, asking asking the Lord Jesus to to give you courage and uh, a lot of asking to know how to discern to pull back when you need to pull back. Yeah. And I think something important to turn to is like the beatitudes. Like mm -hmm. when it comes to that, like I had it pulled up here, and you you mentioned that, like it says. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And merciful doesn't mean like, oh, okay, I'll just, I'll just let you do that. Right. I, I'll just let you live a sinful life. You know. No, merciful is 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 bringing to recognition what Christ wants them to hear. Right. What they need to hear. And it says, "Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which." are persecuted for righteous righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You know, being persecuted is is all kinds of things. Like that can can what goes on in the Middle East, you know, that's real persecution. Right. But like in what we face is a lot of ridicule and a lot of people just turning away from us. A lot of friendships broken. And and that hurts, you know, but it's if you didn't righteous, righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you <laughs> falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Yeah. For mm -hmm. so persecute they the prophets which were before you. So they per Christians all throughout time have been persecuted, have been ridiculed, but... Think about that. If we prevail, we great is our reward. Amen. That's awesome. Which is another word for in like you're saying endure. Right. You know, um, so so we have talked about how to how to get these rewards, you know, to, to, to love him, to, to be faithful, um, to, to endure. Um is, is there any way that I can, you know, when if in, in a in a physical standpoint, when whenever I if I were to ever come into to great great financial reward. I want to know that there's how I can, you know, store that money away to keep it safe. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Brother John, you you, or you already mentioned that, that we're not to store up treasures here on earth, but, but store them up in heaven where thief and uh, thief and rust can't cor corrupt them and steal them. So, so how do I make sure that I I value these and, and I keep them there? I mean, keeping those, keeping those. Rewards. Yeah. How, how do I how do I not tarnish those rewards? I think. You continue continue on enduring enduring like you have it within faith and in in, in the things that God would command us to do to continue the work of the gospel. Continue those things. But you can you can if you don't if you don't do certain things, you can have your works. I don't say works, but have your crack rewards stuck mm -hmm. to another to another Christian. Yeah, and, and so that's what I was referencing. You know, how do we Make sure that we don't lose those rewards. Um, you know, for, for example, in First Corinthians, uh, Paul wrote in chapter three. He said, "Every man's work shall be made manifest, mm -hmm. for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed, revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's works abide which he hath built uh, thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss." But he himself be saved, yet so is by fire. So, so Paul's saying that absolutely we can uh, store up these treasures in heaven, mm -hmm. but they're going to be tried. They're, the, the the purpose behind them. So, so brother, John, you mentioned uh, you know the the, the Christmas shoe boxes. Um, you know the, the church is involved in, in, in several things, and then on, on our own personal um, lives, you know we not know what we do out on, on the streets. Uh, for the Lord, but is our purpose correct? You know, I, I, that, that's where it all focuses on. It's not so that I can, like you said, boast about it or, or, or even just to say, well, you know, it's what I'm supposed to do. But is our purpose really for Christ's glory? I, th I think that's how we really secure the, the, those, those, those rewards in heaven is to make sure that I'm not doing this for any other purpose than to bring God glory. Right. And something that 
comes by following God's law Mm -hmm. and by sticking to it. And it says in Psalms 19, I'll start in verse 8. It says, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. And uh, I'll just keep reading. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. So it's saying God's law is better than all that. Yeah. yeah. And more, moreover by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Amen. You know, and so why is it that, that these rewards are, are, are so important? You know, heaven's going to be awesome regardless whether I have a crown or not, right? I mean, I mean I'm going to be in the presence, like, like I said, of, of our Savior, Jesus Christ, I'm going to be in the presence uh, of God the Father and, and, and God the Holy Spirit. We're, we're, we're still going to see those uh, r- roads uh, paved with gold. We're still going to see you know, the, everything there. Why is it important that we have these rewards? Now we get back to the Revelations when they throw the crown to his feet. Re- Revelation 4. Yeah. Yep. I so. got you, homie. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Revelations 4.10. And, it, and this is, it's, it's John it being revealed to him. But it says the four and 20 elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, talking about Jesus on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure. They are and were created. You know, Jeremy said, um, you know, I'm still going to get a hu- go to heaven. Why? What's the big deal about the crowns? Because he is worthy. Amen. He yeah. created yeah. all, and and that's why it, it matters because we get to throw them at his feet. Right. And that's why it's. I'm just going to be frank. It's so frustrating when we see these Christians, um, and and I've been there myself. You know, I still get into these slumps from time to time where we we. I'm saved. I know that I am. I'm going to heaven. I'm frustrated because nobody's listening. Well, me. Yeah, you know, no, nobody, nobody's watching this, right? And just, just what's the point? Well, the point is, why would we not share what we have? I want to bring God glory. Right. You know, First uh, Corinthians ten thirty one is, is a verse that was drilled in my head as a kid. Whether you eat, drink, or whatsoever you do, do all for the glory of God. You know, it's not about us. It, you know, so as, as this Christmas season uh, comes about and, and everything kind of surrounds us, and it's. It's all, it's all about, you know, the family. It's all about us and what we want and, and, and how things are going to go. I want us to just take a moment and step back and realize that it's not about anything about that. It's about bringing God glory. It's about striving to, to have as much as we possibly can to throw at his feet. Because, guys, he, he, he died for us, right? There's not one thing that he hasn't done to secure us. <laughs> And that's the reason why we celebrate possess the hope. Amen. I mean, he he came to, he left all the glories of heaven. He didn't have to. He didn't need us. No. Um, you know, he, he was in the presence of God the Father and the Holy Spirit. He didn't need people. But yet, for, for whatever reason, and, and, and we may never know on this side of glory why he created, I don't know. But he done so to bring bring him glory, is what the Bible says. Right. Um, and so he left the, the thrones of, of heaven, came down, and, and, and bare our sin because we couldn't keep the law. And, and so he took our sins and he bore them on the cross, paid for our, our, our debts, but with his blood, defeated death and, and rose on the third day to go and ascend to be the father, to, to, to be our advocate yeah. so that we can be seen righteous. So why in the world do, do we go to church as much as we do? Why in the world do we do the things that we do? It's because I want to have as much as I have as possible to give back to him whenever I get to heaven. It sure does make you feel awful a little the little things that happen to us, and you go, oh, I don't know if I can do this or not. Mm-hmm. And he goes to the cross and, and shed his blood for us. He goes and takes the brutal whippings and beatings where, and, and Isaiah says he's unrecognizable mm-hmm. as a man. Yeah. We got a good Lord. We do. An awesome, amazing God. An amazing God. Well, guys, this has been awesome. 
I, I so appreciate it. If, if you've student, stayed tuned this long, uh, we, we do appreciate it. And uh, we do thank you for it. And please do remember that Jesus is the only way. Have a great day. God bless.